Welcome to Electron Online. To get a better understanding of the partial derivative, let's do an application of the partial derivative. In this case, the application is the Lagrangian, which is used in mechanics. Here we express the Lagrangian, which is a function in terms of energy of a system, where we have the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. Notice that the kinetic energy of a particle attached to a spring, which oscillates back and forth, is going to be equal to 1 half mv squared, m being the mass of the particle, v being the velocity of the particle, minus the potential energy which is stored in the compressed or elongated spring, 1 half kx squared, where k is the spring constant, and x is the distance away from the equilibrium point. Again, this is a function of the variable v, the velocity, and of the variable x position. Now, if we take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the variable x, then this becomes a constant. We take the partial derivative, this goes away, and we get the following result. The partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x is equal to minus, notice we get 2 times 1 half, which is 1, k times x. Now what is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x? Well, it turns out we get minus kx, and when we're dealing with springs, that means that is equal to the force of the spring pulling on the mass, and so this is equal to minus kx, which means that the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x is equal to the force applied to the system. Now we're going to take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to the other variable, the variable v. Again, when we do that, the other variable becomes a constant. The partial of the Lagrangian with respect to v is equal to 2 times 1 half is 1, m times v, m times v. Notice that this is a constant, so that simply drops out when we take the partial derivative with respect to v. And this represents m times v, which is the momentum of the particle. So again, when we take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the variable v, we get the momentum. Now, if we take the derivative with respect to time, not the partial, but the derivative with respect to time of this quantity right here, the ddt of the Lagrangian, the partial of L with respect to v, this is equal to m times the ddt of the velocity, which is equal to m times a, the acceleration. Now you can see that here we get the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x, we get the force, and here we take the time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity, and we get ma, so that means that if we then subtract one from the other, we can say that the d dt of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity minus the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to, and where are we here, with respect to x, is equal to zero. Now, how do we know that? Well, let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. This gives us m times a, m times a, minus, and minus the minus kx, which is equal to the force, minus the force is equal to zero, and then if we solve this for the force, we get f equals ma, which means this is the equation describing the second law of Newton. Again, we can describe a energy condition of a system by taking the kinetic energy minus the potential energy, we call that Lagrangian. We could take the partial derivative of that Lagrangian with respect to the first variable x, v becomes a constant, then we get the force of the system, then we take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to v, we get the momentum of the system, if we then take the time derivative of that, we get the m times a, mass times acceleration, and then if we subtract one from the other, we can set it equal to zero, because that gives us the equation f equals ma. So you can see there's some real applications to partial derivatives that we can use in all kinds of circumstances, in this case, the mechanical problems using the Lagrangian. And that's how it's done.